I've worked with my 8x10 century camera for quite some time now, and I still think she looks great for a 100 year old lady, right? But after all these years, her worn bellows started to let some additional light in. I fixed this with liquid rubber, but I knew this was not a final solution. So I wanted to order a new custom bellow. For that I did all the necessary measurements and wrote it down in the document. I sent the document to a company who is specialized for bellow making. I will link them down below as well. Working together with them was great and they were very helpful. After some weeks the package finally arrived and I was very excited as you can imagine. And also very careful with the knife. I ordered a red one because I love the color and it also is my company color and some companies like Kodak built their large format cameras also with a red bellow back then. They did such a great job, it looks so beautiful. And they also built uh, as requested the little rings in there for the bellow support later. I love it. Now I had to dismount the old bellow, for that I started with the front. Because I wanted to keep and reuse all parts, I had to be very careful. It was a pain to unscrew these screws. They barely moved at the beginning. It was a good idea to mark the wooden park so I know which side goes up later on. For me it was important to keep the camera as original as possible and reuse all possible parts that will preserve the history of this beautiful camera. Honestly, it took forever to get everything out. Yes, the struggle is real. But after some really tough fights, I was able to take it off. This guy you see here took forever. So here I collected all the screws, sadly one broke and still is stuck in the camera. Now let's go on with the back of the bellow. This was only nailed, so I had to get out every single nail in a way to preserve the nails. That was another challenge and took way longer than I ever expected. This was the first one, another 40 to go. At some point I made it. The wood looked very clean and I could preserve most of the tiny little nails. After the bellow came off, I freed the wooden front part from the bellow and prepared it for the new one. My Affixit toolkit was very helpful for the whole dismounting action. Who thought that tools from modern smartphones come in handy for a 100 year old camera? That's not a sponsored content by the way. <laughs> After everything was finished I was ready to mount the new bellow. For that I drove to a friend who is a carpenter. Here's a beautiful moment from my road trip there. After arriving at my friend's house we started immediately. To be on the safe side I brought some spare screws and nails. I sanded the bellow and the wooden front part to give the glue more surface real estate. The wooden front part fitted perfectly into the bellow. That means all my measurements were right and they did a great job. Now we tape the felt away from the gluing area and cut the remaining bellow material off. After that we started to glue everything together. We applied the glue in several layers and let it dry before we pressed everything together. This glue worked great, I linked it also down in the description. At the end we removed the tape and glued the felt on the bellow parts and mounted the wooden part back on the camera. Half the work done, right? Oh man, we were wrong again. First my friend started to cut cardboard. 
Then we folded this cardboard into the end of the bellow and nailed it afterwards with the original nails onto the camera. For that my friend modified special pliers to hold the tiny nails and so we were able to nail them in much easier. I was not able to capture how we put in the nails because we needed four hands and even more. It was a real pain to get them in without damaging the camera. At the end he cut off the excess bellow material. He had some super steady hands. I think another option would have been to glue the excess material on the inside of the bellow, but we decided to get that way. By the way, I glued the cardboard to the bellow to make it stiffer. Now I taped down the bellow material. Why did I do that? I wanted to paint the edge with liquid rubber. That will protect the loose end of the bellow material, because the liquid rubber prevents the fabric to unstitch. And it's also very elastic and if something breaks there, I think it holds it a little bit better in place. I hope that makes sense. After I mounted the ground glass, I was bothered by the red inner part of the bellow. That could be an issue at some point. For example, when I should film. So I mixed the same screen printing paint I used for the darkroom tent video with cold fix. The cold fix helps to cure the paint without heating it up. So why did I use the screen printing paint again? The screen printing paint has the advantage that it goes deep into the fabric and stays very elastic. I think it turned out great and you can see that it's really deep in the fabric. My old lady also got some scratches. To make them go away I applied some self-made sandra varnish. This works like magic and makes them disappear and protects the wood as well. I'll link also the video how to make sandra varnish below. I will keep all the leftover parts to document the history of this camera. What I or we have done is all part of my work in art. Doing this all by myself makes a big difference. And it influences my sitters, my work and me. Every single portrait plate I will do with it will be influenced from this renovation and from the original parts we used. After I'm no more, this camera will hopefully still be and with that it has more stories to tell. History is very important, let's help others to remember it. I love the look of my renovated camera and now I'm very very looking forward to work with it again. It looks so pretty. So guys leave me a comment, I would love to read what you guys think about this project and what you guys think about history and using original parts. And I'll be back guys. <laughs>